Welcome back everyone to this tutorial. So when we left off last time we had gone over kind of some of the, just the different tools that you have in Darktable and this time we're going to, going to be going over some more tools. Now if you want to you can check the bottom timeline of the video. I'll have put the time codes down so you can skip to the part of the video that you want. And last time if you remember we talked a little bit about cropping and rotating although we'll get more into that. We talked a little bit about exposure and that was kind of about it. Oh and maybe a little bit about white balance. So if your dark table doesn't look like this you might be in the light table section and so all you have to do to get out of here is double click on the image that you want to use or just click on dark table right here so you go ahead and click on that and you can see that dark table is yelling at me it says no image open so i need to just go ahead and double click on this image and there we go now i can check and see what dark table is automatically applying to the image if i click here on the show only active tab and as you can see right now nothing is being applied to this image outside of white balance and i can even turn that off if i want it to i'm just going to click this little eye parameter here to reset to default and i'm just going to do that on all these so we have this image and it is starting from nothing so let's go ahead and go through this. I have gone ahead and turned on all the modules. I went on how to turn, I went over how to turn on those modules in the previous tutorial. So if I have some here that you don't see, just come down here and go ahead and turn those on. Or feel free to just search for those in the module search bar. All right, so I'm gonna go through some of the easy ones here, this tutorial, like invert. So with the invert tool, you have the color of film material, and these are just some predefined colors. If you click this little color box here, you can also define a color using this color picker here, or you can select a color using the color picker right here and select anywhere in your image. I can even select a color, let's say from my image, that is my invert point. So I can go ahead and select a color over here and you can see where I select the color matters and it changes how Darktable inverts the colors. It's also inverting the brightness and darkness. So if I am selecting a very uh, a very dark part, let me turn that off. So yeah, you can see uh, if I turn this off, this bright part of the flower, I've selected that. So that now becomes black. If I select a dark part of the image, then let's go ahead and find a shadow here. Where's the dark shadow? Maybe right here. Then you can see that the whole image becomes dark. The invert tool is best used for when you have scanned in a negative into your image and then you're changing that into a workable photograph. So if you shot manually and then you took those negatives and scanned them in, that's when you would want to use this tool. Uh, use that to your heart's content. For me, I don't really invert colors on images a whole lot, but it's a really easy one to go over and very simple. Next, let's actually go over the crop and rotate a little more in depth. So let me go ahead and just reset everything. So we've gone ahead and reset our image with the crop and rotate here. We can turn it off, nothing happens. We can turn it on, nothing happens. So we can add a margin to our image. If I click on the margins tab, you can see that this is a way of cropping your image that allows you to be very precise with your left, right, top and bottom margin. So if I put this left, if I take this left slider and move it to the right, you can see that it just only moves this left slider. And of course I can put my mouse over the image and move that and move that left side. I can move two at once two sides at once if I go ahead and and grab the corner of the box. If I put my mouse inside of the crop box and just click and drag, you can see that I'm moving the entire crop box. And if you look over here at the margins, they're all changing percents because all of these edges are moving in accordance with the edges of my image. And these are the different percents. So now this left side is 7.52% away from this original left side, whereas this right side is 18.34% further away from the right side of the image. So just keep that in mind. If you really want fine-tuned cropping adjustments, this is where you get them in the margins. But if we go back to the main uh, tab here, you can see that we can go ahead and flip our image. This is where we would 
flip. So if you think that, uh, let's say you took a picture and you had a slope coming from the right to the left and you wanted it going from the left to the right, you can just flip things horizontally or you can flip them vertically, vertically or you can flip them both or you can go none. So that's how you flip an image. And then this angle is the rotation. So you can go ahead and rotate the image. And you can see as I'm rotating it around, this is 45 degrees. And I can just keep rotating it. And now we've almost got 180 degrees. Most of the time you shouldn't be going more than 15 degrees in regards to your image. So anyway, uh, you can also see that as I'm rotating this, you can see that as I'm rotating, the box is actually, the crop box is actually changing and that's because this, this box cannot exceed the bounds of my image. So if the box is too big, like something like this, and then I try to rotate this image and this side and this side crossed into the crop box, then the then Darktable automatically shrinks the crop box down. Okay, so let me go ahead and just reset everything here by hitting the little I and that'll give us more space to, space to work with. Uh, then we have the keystone here. This helps us change the perspective on our image. So I can just go ahead and click something like vertical and then uh, you, we have these two little maybe infinity symbols you'd call them, but just underneath them you can see that there's a red dot and I can go ahead and grab this and pull it in or push it out to change the keyst. And now you can see what's what's gone ahead and happened. We've pulled the image down. This would be like if you have a doorway and you want the doorway to be completely square in the image, you would use you would use this feature. I know that Lightroom has this feature as well. I think it, they call it perspective lines or something like that. So you can also see that you can do vertical, which gives you these vertical lines. You can do horizontal, which gives you these horizontal lines, or you can do full, which gives you both the vertical and the horizontal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, kind of move these around a little bit. And then I'll just click on the OK right here. And you can see once I click on the OK, then my keystone is applied. Now you can also see that I have these black areas here in the image and that can be fixed by uh, using the crop here and cropping into the image to then get rid of that extra space that's created, if that's what bothers you. Okay, let me reset this. And then finally, we have some, some different stuff. We can come here to uh, automatic cropping. Uh, the aspect right now is currently set to freehand, which means that I can grab either side and change this to my heart's content. But you can also have all of these different aspect ratios like square, and then that will keep your, your crop to a square or maybe a four by three, uh, anything like that. So run through these aspects to see which ones you like. Uh, I always like anamorphic lenses. So having an anamorphic crop like that's pretty fun, but you can see that we have a problem and that's that uh, it's vertical. We can cho choose this little, we can choose this little circular arrow here and that will allow us to rotate our crop. We can rotate it to be landscape instead of portrait. Okay, finally, this last little part is really easy. This, these are just the lines in the crop, in the crop selection area. So the horizontal lines, if I just take those down, or I can increase them a lot, depending on what I'm trying to line up and how I'm, I'm trying to crop my image. But for me, I think leaving those at three, actually, because I like to use the rule of thirds, works well enough for me. Okay, well, I think that's all we have time for in this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support, and I hope that this is helping you get out there and shoot some good pictures and edit them in Darktable. So please like, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I hope you guys are staying safe, and I will see you next time.